I'd like to uh, share some uh, photos with you about deposition uh, in Antarctica and in particularly in this area called the Dry Valleys which are at the edge of the ice cap um, near the McMurdo Station uh, where there's actually a bare desert land that is uh, accumulating sediment. So if you zoom in a little bit, um, this is Ross Island, uh, which is an active volcano. Uh, there's this beautiful glacier that's coming out in, onto sea ice. And so this is all sea ice, and you can see it broken up into icebergs here. This area is much colder than Greenland, and there's very little open water. Um, in the summer, you can get some streams and rivers flowing as well as open water ponds and the sea ice can break up but in general it's uh, much colder. So we have flown from McMurdo uh, to several places in the Dry Valley, Pierce Valley here um, and Wright Valley here. I'm going to show you mostly photos from Wright Valley uh, and the flight and it, it, it really is uh, quite different uh, from Greenland in that it's uh, again, mostly uh, frozen over, and there are no plants um, at all. So this is a, a view looking uh, south uh, from the McMurdo Station, uh, where it's uh, mostly covered in ice and snow. Um, particularly, this was a, a spring photo. Um, it's qu still quite cold. This is called the Farrar Glacier, so the ice cap uh, is um, up, in, up in the clouds here, and it's uh, filling the valley um, all the way through here. There's, in general, less sediment because a lot of the ice is coming off the ice cap and it's not melting uh, as quickly as it is in, say, Greenland. Um, when you get into the dry valley areas, the ice cap again is back in the clouds and uh, the Taylor Glacier is visible here. This is uh, Taylor Valley. Uh, but the air is very dry and so the ice uh, sublimates. It basically goes from ice directly into vapor. Uh, and so the ice is flowing down but most of it just goes up into the atmosphere. There are also uh, alpine glaciers that are from snow that are collecting on the mountains on either side. And as you can see in this close part, it's, it's pouring down over the mountain and it um, has a lot of crevasses and breaks up and then it refreezes to form uh, glaciers coming down. And these areas in here and this one back here are lakes. They have liquid water, but they're covered with meters of ice and that ice is permanent. The, the edges around them can melt in midsummer, in part due to the heat of sunlight being absorbed by the dark rocks helping melt the ice, but they do have that permanent ice cover. You don't get the um, open water lakes that you see in Greenland. So this is Wright Valley. It's uh, really quite dry and this uh, is taken um, in the summer and there's enough melt water and enough absorption of sunlight by the rocks that you get liquid flowing water. So this is the Onyx River. Uh, it's really just a stream but it's the largest river on the continent of Antarctica. And it's uh, flowing um, down and to the left uh, in this image. And it has a typical river form with a, a meandering and sometimes a braided channel. It flows into Lake Vanda. So this is a picture I took standing on Lake Vanda looking up. The Onyx River uh, flows through here into the lake providing it with its meltwater. One of the nice features about uh, Lake Vanda is it shows that really nice U-shaped profile. So when a, this valley was carved out by glaciers and when glaciers flow down a valley they have a wide erosive basis. The flow 
uh, fills a lot of the valley, like we could see with the Ferrar Glacier early on. And thus they're, they're eroding all along the floor of the valley, which tends to make them wide and flat-bottomed. When rivers erode, the, the erosive power is concentrated right, right in the um, stream gully, and so they tend to erode the most there, and tend to get V-shaped valleys. The fact that this valley is still U-shaped, even though the largest river in Antarctica flows through it, shows that the river has very little influence on the landscape compared to the ice. So this is looking in the other direction and, and from up uh, a plateau. So this is the head of Wright Valley. There's a little uh, ice-covered pond. And this is the edge of the Antarctic ice sheet, um, supported by bedrock mountains and ice uh, flowing off the top and reforming as glaciers down below, but not enough to still fill this valley. Um, there might be some ice uh, under the debris right here. It has uh, the morphology that looks a little bit like um, uh, it's been flowing as if it had, had ice in it. So obviously there's bedrock around the edges, but a lot of this valley uh, is covered in, in uh, glacial till that was deposited when the ice was last in this valley. And that till looks uh, something like this. Uh, there are large uh, blocks that stick out, but a lot of it is a smooth surface with grains that are sort of, or class that are sort of fitted together. And you'll notice that this, this rock has a very strange uh, weathering profile to it. And it's been a long time since ice was in this area and there's been a lot of wind blowing and the wind reworks the sand and abrades a lot of these rocks. And then there's extensive freeze-thaw cycling, um, particularly in the summer when the rocks can absorb enough heat to have um, very large temperature changes from day to night. And that breaks up the individual crystals and um, particularly in pockets where there's maybe a little bit more humidity or, or slightly different changes in the profile, you end up with these very irregular weathering shapes. So if we look at the ground in more detail, the till, we can see that it is poorly sorted. So there's a lot of uh, sand in here. Um, this is a cobble-sized grain, as, as these are as well. And in places where the wind, um, where the till is protected from the wind, the, the um, glacial flower and the sand are still between the clasts. And that includes if you dig down onto those flat surfaces at all, you'll find a lot of very fine grains. So there are also places where the sand accumulates. And uh, this is uh, one of them. This, from the one ripple crest to the other down here, is about three meters, so nine, uh, nine or ten feet. And this is actually in granule-sized sand. And then as the, you go further up in the image, which is also uphill, the ripple size gets finer, and or the ripple wavelength is uh, smaller, the ripples are closer together and smaller, and the grain size is also smaller. And the wind gets funneled into this valley and the very fine grains are, are too small to be deposited in this zone here, but a little further up on the valley wall the wind is a little bit less strong and uh, the and the coarse grains don't make it up there and the fine grains can actually accumulate. So these grains were all once part of the till that's eroded out uh, from other places um, in the valleys. So this is going back into uh, Wright Valley and you can see that a lot of the, the pebbles on the top are flat and that's from the abrasion of the the wind grains uh, flattening them off, but we do have a lot of the, the big rocks sticking out with some really beautiful, amazing uh, sculptures uh, created by the uh, 
freeze thaw and temperature cycling. And thanks for watching.